Hi, today I have a special package. It's really huge. Let's open it up. Well, it looks Chinese already. I guess you already guessed it, it's a 3D printer from CTC. We are actually really cheap and I uh, ordered one to check for the quality. I read a lot of good about them on the internet. Now you can see it better, it says actually it says 3D printer here and there's still some packaging on it that I have to get rid of. And here we go with the extras. Obviously, there's the power cord. There is a SD card of 4 GB with instructions in it. There are a set of screws. These hold the filament uh, on the back side. And this holds the actual filament which is going to the uh, extruder. And obviously, a data cable. And finally, there's also one spool of filament. I am not sure what type it is. Oh, it says here PLA. Uh, so it's normal PLA filament, 1.75 millimeters. And this is how it looks. Taken, well, taking this out. And the, the printer head, and it's not yet assembled as you can see. I have it lying on the printer bed right now, which is maybe not the best place for it. Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about my CTC printer I just bought. It was very cheap on eBay for about 450 euros, which is, um, which should be around 550 dollars or so, I'm not sure. And it uh, already came with one roll of filament equipped and it printed out of a box almost. Let's talk about it and look at it while we are at it. Here you can see the CTC printer. As you can see it is a replication of the replicator dual extruder from MakerBot Industries. It is the same design as the FlashForge 3D printer. The Chinese guys also sent these prints with the printer, but I'm not sure if they made it with this one or not. But they definitely printed something with this printer before. I also checked out the dual extrusion part and uh, apart from a small miscalibration the dual extrusion works fine. As you can see this one is not really aligned at the middle. There is some space around it and it's more to the right and the bottom. I'm still pleased with the dual extrusion feature and I will probably use it in the future but I'm not sure. I'm mainly using the right printer head and one thing you will have to change in the beginning is that the right the left extruder is somehow placed higher than the right one. So I had to screw this apart and put it lower. If you're only printing with one extruder it's fine if you leave it higher. The next thing you will have to do is make a bed leveling. For that the printer already has a setting and it will step you through the bed leveling process and then you're fine. I also changed some of the tape that was on the print bed because it was starting to rip and my print bed was uh, lined badly before so it got damaged. One thing I have to do in the future is I will have to change the firmware to a newer version because it's running on the oldest firmware that they've got. I also want to add a glass blade to the printer bed so that it's more even because it is somehow a bit warped in this direction but it's actually quite level so it's very good to print with it. So let's have a look at the prints I've already made. This is the original filament which they sent me but it's kind of brittle and it uh, tends to break off easily. This is black filament which I ordered and it's much better. 
As you can see, the surface of these vases is very smooth and very good. At the bottom there are some problems with overhangs. But this is due to not using support. All in all, the quality of the print is very good. It's mainly a thing of calibration and settings which you use when you're slicing. We have some boxes and you can see they are very, very good. This is the actual, this is the side of it and it's actually very smooth. And you can see I printed some screws in it and they are actually very detailed. This is a low setting print and yeah, it came out quite okay. It's a lamp holder for a bike and you can slide in your lamp in this direction. I think it will work out good enough. And there's another one. It's an apple inside the box. And as you can see it's also very smooth surface. So straight surfaces are very good. And even inside you can see that the quality is very high. As, except for in the apple here. There is some kind of dent. There are some problems with the filament extrusion. Which I'll show you now. The problem I mentioned is that filament tubing, this black tubing is only 4 mm thick while it needs to be 6 mm thick. I already ordered thicker tubings for this pair. The problem arises in the back here where it's clipped onto the board, onto the printer. The tubing actually just falls below and blocks the filament from getting into it. This is why I taped it to the printer with some tape here. I hope you can see it. It's black duct tape. This improved the prints by a lot. Hey, now you can see my 3D printer printing a dual print. The left extruder, the red one, is printing support material. On the left side here you can see very good support material. For some reason it has these gates on the left and right side and you see a lot of, let's call it noise for now, but it's uh, actually trash or something. Uh, you actually don't want to have this kind of stuff, but it's very easy to remove after the build is fi finished. So I will show you a build when it's finished, see you then. And the build is finished. As you can see it came out quite nicely. The black part is the actual build and the red part is the support. You can also see the difference in the filaments. The red filament didn't print out too well. It's the one they sent with the printer. So it was poorly made filament. And uh, yeah, its properties are actually quite bad for printing somehow. While the black one made a solid wall on the side here. This is really good, but this really bad. But this is why I used this as a support and not as the main base. I will clean up this build and there was actually more of these red cloudy things in the build which you can now easily remove. And here we go. You can see the build did not clean up that nice. I only used five minutes for the cleanup right now and you can file the red stuff away. And I will have to take off this raft off here because this is actually many individual parts of the open dive virtual reality goggles. It goes like this. This is the virtual reality thing and you have it like this in your face and on the back side your cell phone will be and you can click head straps into these parts and when you will have some kind of virtual reality which works really well with uh, newer age cell phones I will link the project into the description if I had used water soluble support material I would have no problem getting rid of all this red stuff and it would have been a very, 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 very good build. 
so you can see the details on the surfaces are very precise there are almost no errors and the only problem I had with the stool extrusion was that on the right side the red stuff was building up because uh, somehow it didn't get off or just started to hang, uh, hang on to this part here actually it was the left side because it was this way around so there was some red clouds building up but that is to be expected by this kind of process and yeah, if you would have used water soluble material it would have been a very good build I heard you can use um, ABS as well and other materials but uh, PLA is really the best stuff for me right now and it doesn't warp and I'm very satisfied with this build actually it had high quality one the tenth of a millimeter layer height and still quite a high feed rate of 90 millimeters per second for the printing and 200 millimeter per second for the normal travel speed so this took about 19 hours total and it's quite noisy actually if you have it in your bedroom so I just just only printing if you small builds or if you can put your printer in a room where you don't hear it. So if you're a hobbyist and you want to try your hand at a 3D printer I would recommend this one but if you don't want to have any hassles with it and you want to have it work out of a box and you want some guarantees and stuff this printer might not be for you. I think there's probably some changes with the which will have to be made so that the prints become even better and this kind of thing doesn't happen again. Apart from that it's very good. One thing I haven't mentioned before is the slicers. The printer runs only with the Makerware and Replicator G software so far. I think there's some other software called Replicator Host or something which will also work with this printer but I haven't tried it so far. My goal is to have Cura work with it it's the Ultimaker software slicer and I had uh, experiences with it in the past. I'm very pleased with the way Cura slices builds. While I don't like the Raft Replicator G and the Maker Bear are making. This is the Maker Bear Raft and you can barely get it off or in any case yeah, you might be able to get it off but usually it just breaks and it's brittle and stuff. By the rafts and prims from Cura are just better. Where is software called GPX and I will try it in the future to port my Cura G-code to the Makerware G-code. I will let you know how this works out and I hope to see you again with some exciting 3D printed projects.